So, hello, Miss Varen. Hello. You hello. can call me Lisa. Nathan, thank you for having me on your show. Thank very you excited. Very thank you for taking the time out to do this interview for Bodyslam.net. Really appreciate it. And uh, it's absolutely absolute pleasure to Yeah, thank you. I think I've, I've done an interview with you guys before. Oh, incredible. Probably before... Any before I start, this is my little, okay. my little treat to myself that I get to interview okay, someone, okay. Uh, a legend like yourself. Oh, come on. Stop it. No, Thank it's you. True. It's true. Very Thank true. You. That means a lot. It means a lot coming from the fans. You know, we I think we all live like in our own closet, like, you know, just in a bubble, mm -hmm. not really realizing, you know, what we did mm -hmm. or what we do and like our appearances and stuff like that until you're in the environment and you're just like, yeah. you forget all this stuff, you know, because after wrestling, we're leading a normal life, kind of, sort of, you know, a little hectic, but yeah. <laughs> good, good. So, right. I know you're on very busy time, so I won't take too much of your time. So we'll roll straight into it. So, okay. I believe you grew up in San Bernardino, California. I did. And, um, Tell us about your upbringing and growing up on the West Coast. My goodness. Um, I am a California girl, but um, I've had so many addresses because moving from here to there, to Chicago, to Memphis, to Louisville. Um, yeah, uh, I, I've moved so much. My my mom had to write my addresses in pencil because she's like, you're a gypsy. And I go, I know, I know. Yeah, I can't stay in one place for very long. But growing up, you know, I have three older brothers. Um, they were all, uh, you know, wrestling amateur wrestling my oldest brother was um in the pan am olympics and he got the gold in wrestling so um never thought in a million years you know um i was more biology math uh background and i wanted to go to med school and stuff like that and you know i was a tomboy um did you know no girly girly dresses nothing like that i was just take my shoes off and i would be running around the neighborhood with my top off this i was a little little kid so you would i used to get mistaken for a boy all the time all the time but um you know i do think my brothers you know they were um they didn't roughhouse me everyone's like no wonder you're so tough and i go no i got so spoiled from my brothers that they were so overprotective and um treated me like a princess you know they my, my oldest brother got me my first car my second oldest brother um got me my first motorcycle my other one used to drag me around like you know I always got attached to their girlfriends. That was the problem. Mm -hmm. When they would break up with them, I would be so devastated because I got attached to them, you know? But, um, you know, I did gymnastics. I was a cheerleader, um, competitive cheerleading, which was like required gymnastics in in our, our neck of the woods. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think being a ham doing that kind of solidified, like prepared me for wrestling because of gymnastics being in the spotlight in front of all your peers in mm. the worst case scenario in high school and junior high and elementary school where people are so critical, you know what I mean? And putting yourself out there. But I had a good childhood. My mom and dad, you know, didn't really get on my back about doing well on grades because I was super competitive mm. on everything I did, even mm. on grades, stuff like that. So, um, and I was a very late bloomer, didn't have my first boyfriend until I was 16 because pardon me because i have three older brothers yeah that's why i was so scared to date i was like i would have crushes and when they would like me back i was like oh no 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 i don't like them anymore no 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 uh um, no thank you i was so scared very scared like to pass the three brother test before they even got anywhere near and my dad too you know oh, he's God. an air force guy so yeah yeah but you know um my my brothers are easy though, you know, they're they're funny and um they're all in California. This is why I moved back to California. Mm. My three brothers, my dad, my whole family's here. You know, I have New York families and family, but you want to be home. You know, I lost my mom like six years ago. Oh, and sorry, you know, my yeah. dad is in his eighties and you wanna be home. You yeah. know what I mean? And, you know, I'm, I'm I'm just comfortable in my surroundings. Not cheap. You pay an arm and a leg to be here. This is why you see me hustle. Hustle, hustle. I do a lot of appearances. Yeah. yeah. I, I can imagine I've heard about California. Yeah. And there's no air conditioning in my apartment. I live in San Diego. No heater. Oh. Um, didn't have curtains. So I had to get blackout curtains, noise cancellation. Yeah. 
I got rid of our car because, you know, I travel for work. Mm. I just take a lift or the bus to the airport. I'm mm. very low maintenance. I think people have a misconception that we're like very, I need this. I need that. I need this. I'm just a minimalist. You know, mm. I live in a studio loft. I don't, I don't need anything. You know what I mean? So mm. I'd rather enjoy life, you know, oh, but I had a good upbringing in California. Yeah. It's yeah. great. Thing. Yeah. Speaking of the chili, but, but, it does, but, but it does cause you to be insecure growing up in California and maybe just everywhere, you okay. know, because you know, growing up with like teenagers and, you know, they're, it's very superficial, not just yeah. in California, but it's like, you know, looks and all that kind mm. of stuff and um, being made fun of. And, you know, it's, 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 it's I couldn't imagine having a child now. It's like, because the kids just are so brutal. And with the social media, I don't thank God we didn't have that back in the day. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. yeah. Even in my childhood, I'm glad it wasn't around. I'm right. Really because we were around. so, we were so encouraged to go outside and play and, yeah. um, Go play so the tag. lights came on and that was your cue to go home. Street lights. Like, came lights? On. Yeah. Okay. See, this is how spoiled I was. Yeah. I didn't have that rule. And I was allowed to spend the night on school nights, but I we didn't, you know, we didn't party. We we studied. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it wasn't, yeah. you know, it wasn't like sending your kid to a rowdy house. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it was it was never enforced on that. Yeah. So I was like very not not like buckled down. I wasn't mm-hmm. like a prisoner in my own home. You know what I mean? So yeah. I remember the kids were like, I have to go. The street lights are on. And I'm like, what? Are you serious? Yeah. I used to be so shocked, but you know, it was safe back then when I was little. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Mine's more from me. My dad being forces, US forces. He was like, right. You're home at this time, this minute. Be home. And you were like, okay. Yeah. I'll be home at this yeah. time. Right, fine. Yeah. You break yeah. the rules. You bend them every now and then, but. Yeah, you need yeah. not to not to annoy the boss, really, as it exactly. were. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That, that was what my mom my mom would say. Like, if I did something wrong, which wasn't, I did. You know, I was just very wild. That you know, just not. I did sit still. I was just very mm. antsy all the time. And go figure, it's ADHD, but it wasn't, um, you know, no. diagnosed back in the day. You know, and um, yeah. My the only thing my mom was like, um, oh, wait till her father gets home. And I, that yeah. would be going, okay, you don't want to, he's already working all day, um, yeah. US Air Force as well. And he's tired and doesn't want to hear it and stuff like that. Mm. So, yeah. 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 They're the words that still give me goosebumps to this day. Yeah. When your dad just, gets home, you go, oh, no. that look, it's just the look. Uh, you go, I'll just go to my room now then. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll see you in a few, a few hours. I'll see you then. Like, yeah. Yeah. They're praying. Like, just, just let me avoid this butt whooping one time, just please. Yeah. Just yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh I feel uh, you 100. And speaking of the cheerleading, I even saw that you got national recognition. Uh, recognition. Apologies, and got to I did the Pro Bowl, the 1989 one. If that's yes, correct. in Hawaii. Yes, yeah. um, I got all of my cheerleading. Um, that was like not not we we went with our cheerleading squad. Yeah, and then. They have like a, it's almost, it's not like a pageant, but you have to do a routine mm-hmm. in front of, it was at UCLA. And this is like 700, 800 kids that are cheerleading and learning new choreography, um, learning more gymnastics, that kind of stuff. It was just based like, it was camp, you know, mm-hmm. it was very competitive. And um, <laughs> I got the most school spirited in school. And I was, you know, I am super competitive. And I got the All American Award, and I brought my mom with me to Hawaii. Nice to f- perform in the halftime. Mm. Yeah, that was nerve wracking. I mean, there's like 300 girls on the the field, and you know, there's like three instructors, so you can't even see like where you're standing, and you're like, oh my, I don't, I hope I get this right. You know what I mean? But it was fun. It was a fun experience. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 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 They read that and was like, oh wow. And it's also too cheerleading. They have that stereotypical, like mm. you know, you know, like kind of ditzy and stuff like mm. that. I was crazy and wild, but you know, you know, in cheerleading, you have to have a certain grade point average to stay on the the mm. team, right? Yeah. But um, we were more competitive squad, you know, trying to win trophies and all that kind of stuff. And um, I yeah, I, cheerleading, I I I that got me into wrestling and fitness competitions and stuff like that mm. prepared me for it. You know what I mean? Mm. Performing in front of a lot of people that are very, uh, 
judgmental. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. But good, but good with good times. Good times. Yeah. So good. And I, I remembered obviously you said you were into the math, the science in school. That ties in nicely there. I saw you studied biology at the University of California and medicine at Loma Lima University. Loma Linda University. Um, yeah. I was still pre med. Um, that was yeah. it was Loma Linda University, um, La Sierra, mm -hmm. and uh, was uh, that school was a private school. I started with a community college just to get my you know you know coming from a middle class home. You know I didn't want my parents. You know three brothers they had to raise, and um, decided to go to um, Riverside Community College. Then um, went to Loma Linda University, which was a private school. And my parents lived 20 minutes from the school and I still had to live on campus. It was all girl campus, no makeup, like very minimal makeup. I I got in trouble for wearing earrings that were too big. And um, the shorts were, you know, uh, oh, yeah. uh, to your knee. It's okay. almost like, you know, the, yeah, it, yeah. And um, if you stay on campus on the weekend, you have to do three to four um, church services. And they're, they're Seventh-day Adventists. I'm not Seventh-day Adventist. So they are vegetarian. Um, I got so fat living there, um, so fat because it was all soy, like all these carbohydrates, beans, and like, you know, and I became vegetarian. I was like, oh, they must know because it's everybody here is either pre-dental, pre-dental, pre-med, mm -hmm. nursing. Um, everything was medical um, background. Must have a note. And that's yeah. that's yeah. why I wanted to go there because I wanted to go to the medical school, Loma mm -hmm. Linda University, which was the first baboon heart transplant. Um, and so I had to go to their Seventh-day Adventist school to even be, or convert to Seventh-day Adventist to even get acknowledged by the med, med you know, for, to get in the medical school. Yeah, but um, didn't go to medical school. Yeah. But um, my old job was, um, since I went to Loma Linda University, um, after that I went to UCLA. Mm -hmm. And that was, um, it's public, okay? And um, not to crap on UCLA at all. Loma Linda University, La Sierra, like, it's very expensive school. You know, my, you know, thank goodness for financial aid and being Hispanic. Um, it, we were working on freaking cadavers, my second quarter of biology. And then the first quarter was, um, uh, we were testing our own urine. And like, this right. is how advanced this school was. It was serious, you know, okay. um, it, it was just no joking around. Everybody there was very bright, um, very intimidating too. I was just mm. not being Seventh-day Adventist. I was very much alone. And that's why I was like, I'm not making a lot of friends here because I'm not the religion. I think they think I'm a wild child, mm. you know, um, and then I transferred to UCLA. Yeah. And I had too much freedom. I got my own apartment living on my own, um, right in Westwood, um, one block away from the school, on, right behind Fraternity Row. Didn't date or anything like that. But it was too much freedom where I was driving around. It's like, oh, my God, I live in L.A. by myself and stuff. In my grades, I didn't focus on my grades. And I told my dad, can I come home? I need a break. I'm just, it's just so much pressure right now. And took a break and met my um, ex-husband. Um, started cocktail waitressing. And he was a bouncer. And he had a friend. We and then we we started dating there. And um, he had a friend, um, Rob. I still remember his name. He worked at the Eye and Tissue Bank, so removing corneas, heart, saphenous vein, bone, middle ear, you know, um, for transportation. And I was like, oh my gosh, are they hiring? I would love to to work at something like that and learn on the job, you know, hands on, and. I had an interview and um, they said, can you start today? And I was like, I already got the job. They're like, you went to Loma Linda University, La Sierra. You must have, you know, you must have a little bit of brains. You know what I mean? Mm. And uh, I did that for years, um, removing the, you know, corneas, you know, heart, mm. like all that kind of stuff. I was um, uh, the surgery team um, three days a week. And then the other three days was being on call with the beeper, <laughs> the pager, the yeah. beeper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then that big brick phone, you know, just in case you need to get called. And um, I, what got me into fitness competitions was when I was, you know, when you're working on a a deceased, you know, um, 
you're cutting through a lot of, you know, fat, fatty tissue. And there was a lot of young, young people, you know? Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't grow up with like a healthy diet or anything like that. We ate what we wanted, you know, soda pop. We were allowed, you know, we, we weren't like no sugar at this time. My, my family was very we, we got what we want, you know, whatever we go to mm. the fridge right now. Yeah. And, um, and if we didn't ask for second portions at dinner, my mom would be insulted. So was forced to have a second plate. No so, um, yeah. and that, yeah. And, um, I started working out my, um, ex husband opened a gym in Redlands, California, started teaching aerobics there. Mm-hmm. And, um, he's like, you need to start lifting weights. He goes, just cardio really bad on your joints so started lifting weights and my body changed like that like Mm. very quickly um i never did steroids or anything like that Mm. and i think also being partial puerto rican maybe my testosterone a little high when i was younger you know naturally yeah and uh, so my body reacted really quick and um i got approached at a gym called gold um oh sorry 24 hour fitness back then i don't think it exists anymore and some guy came up to me and said, hey, have you thought about competing in bodybuilding? I was like, oh, no. And I thought he was hitting on me, you know. And um, so I was like, oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm working out. I, you know, I, I don't talk when I work out. And he goes, well, I'll help you with your diet. And I go, well, when's the competition? He goes, in 30 days. And I go, okay, wait. You want me to get ready for a competition in 30 days, you know, because you're, you know, the water weight all that kind of stuff. Oh my God. It was torturous, torturous in the middle of my workouts. I would start bawling, crying just because I was just so lacking a lot of nutrients, you know, carb, mm. carb depleting and watching yeah. your sodium. Oh my God. I've seen and friends I, of mine do it with bodybuilding. Yeah. It's, it's I've always it's lifted exactly. weights and stuff, but that part I, I never ventured into because I just, well, depleted myself. Yeah. yeah but I, so hats off to you. I'm a foodie. I'm a foodie. Yeah. I'm like, I've yeah. Never like that. Yeah. And um I I won my my class and um and then I saw on TV Fitness America and I was like, oh, they do a dance routine with gymnastics, jumps, mm-hmm. and um a choreograph, you know, a certain one arm push ups and stuff. Mm-hmm. There's certain moves they have to incorporate in that, mm-hmm. you know, and um planks and stuff like that. And uh I was like, oh my God, that's right up my alley. So I entered that. I did very well. Um, started competing in the ones that you do obstacle courses as well. And mm. that's where I, I met Tori Wilson. We were roommates. We were both sponsored by Life O2 Water, that extra oxygenated water. And um, we were roommates. And I scared yeah. her when I first met her. I ran up to her. I go, I'm your roommate. I'm your roommate. And she's like, oh, my God. And she's super shy and quiet. But we became friends from that. And... Um, yeah, we started competing. I'm just, um, I was a roommate of hers at one point. And um, my gosh, it's it's because of Tori I got into wrestling, basically. You know, mm-hmm. she got to WCW from the fitness competitions. Kevin Nash saw her. He goes, oh, my God, that girl's stunning. Look mm-hmm. at her physique. And I went backstage with her at WCW. And I was like, you do this for a living? You walk a guy down to the ramp, down the ramp, and you get mm-hmm. paid for this. And she's like, I know, I know. And I was like, you got to get me in this. And um, this is when WCW was not really hiring. And oh yeah, uh, they're really paying their talent really well. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, I met back China. Back in 99, 2000. Yeah, yeah. Time, probably, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yes. And um, I think it was 1990. Yeah, 99. You're right. And um, I met China. Came. Um, I started personal training. I'm going to see ADHD queen right here. Yeah. It's hard because I, I have so many avenues in my life that I can't even put it all together. Like the yeah. path, like it's just crazy. Um, well, this China. is really good because you are literally working word for Oh, thing. I knew it. Think. Yeah. I'm going to answer most brilliant. of the questions. I'm just going to let you keep... No, 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 no. Don't, because you're just shoehorning everything that I want in. So just, okay. what was yours? Go yeah. for it. So, so you I met, met China. I, I was first much, I was doing personal training. training. Yeah. yeah. And I was still like really jacked and addicted mm. to working out. Um, didn't drink, watched mm. my sodium and all that kind of stuff. And um I met China and, and they charged her a, a guest pass to mm. get him come in. But this was West Hollywood. 
when I lived mm-hmm. in West Hollywood, okay, okay, California. And, you know, they had Fabio was one of their, you know, there was a whole bunch of celebrities that came in. So they mm-hmm. didn't do comp guest passes. So mm-hmm. I went up there, I gave her a stack of guest passes with no expiration. And I said, hey, you know, um, I have two friends you might know, um, Trish Stratus and uh, Corey Wilson. And I go, you know, I know them from the fitness uh, industry. And she goes, wow, you have a good look. Have you ever thought about wrestling? And I go, you know, I think I can do what Rey Mysterio and RVD do, like because of gymnastics and mm. the fitness and all the diving and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And she goes, you have a good look for it. And she said, you need to send your stuff to WWF at the time. I did. Um, spent $600 on this uh, VHS tape. $600. This is back then. Yeah. And, and so don't forget. Um, sorry, I have a tickle in my throat. No, oh, do you think? I've been fighting off um, a cough for like two weeks. Yeah, but, it's been um, going around here as well. they going around yeah, there too? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. It just doesn't go away. No. You know? Yeah. And, um, okay. So where was I at? Um, $600 on my VHS. Um, and don't forget, I'm in Los Angeles. You're yeah. surrounded by people that are experts in editing and, um, sound effects and mm-hmm. music and all that kind of stuff. It's at your fingertips. Yeah. And when I did yeah. in fitness competitions, you know, you pay a choreographer, you know, to compete, um, with, you know, you know, the, when you want to become pro, I got my pro card. Um, at IFBB in fitness and um, in 99, wasn't it? In yeah, New York. yeah, yeah, yes, Debbie Crux show in Tribeca, yeah. yeah. And I used to have posters of her on my wall and stuff like that. And um, oh my gosh, it's uh, my choreographer is like, he goes, Oh, great, I have somebody to help you with your VHS. So got it edited, kept on splicing it, changing it, and every it's like, Okay, that's an extra hundred dollars, that's an extra 50. Bum, bum, bum. The beginning was. I, it was like I had boxing gloves on. Don't ask me why. It's wrestling. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I, I, I punched the, the 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 camera. I go boom, and he goes Lisa Marie Baron, boom, and it faded into another music, um, and then showed my fitness competitions. Mm. Um, I did. I did. I just played a lot of exercises on for the news, the local news, mm. you know, that kind of stuff, and um, did my magazine, you know, not paid magazine. Uh, photo shoots you know they say exposure but you don't get paid you know what i mean so um yeah. Yeah. So i did that and i got a call um kevin kelly kk called me and he said um i didn't tell anybody my ex-husband was the only one that knew that i did okay. this he helped me yeah. put my package together and um he called me and he goes hey um jim ross got your 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 packet on his desk and he said he's never seen such a professional tryout package as as nice as yours and we would like to meet him in 30 days and i was like well what do you see me doing do you see me like walking a guy to the ring like you know trish and tori at the time i I go or do you see me wrestle they said we actually see you wrestle and i was like oh my gosh he goes you wrestle and i go i have three brothers that did it i am very much of a tomboy Mm. you know Builder and you know I did hip hop dance and gymnastics as mm. a kid and um well kid you know in my young adult life and um they uh I googled I don't even think it was Google at that time pro wrestling school and ultimate pro wrestling school came up UPW yeah. so I called them and said hey can I train at your facility um WWF wants to meet me in thirty days and of course they're like yes. Absolutely, because if they have one of their students make it, looks they good can, for them as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. School's yeah. like, hey, we got this person, you know, that kind of stuff. And I went to the wrestling school with my fake nails. Um, I didn't have extensions at that time, but my cute little outfit, matching outfit, and um, no wrestling boots, just tennis shoes, no knee pads, nothing. I didn't know what I was to expect. Okay, hmm. they looked at me as a joke. It was um, this school was. Uh, Jerry Lynn, John Cena, Samoa Joe, Kazarian, Christopher Daniels, um, John Heinrich. Um, uh, it was such a good school. Yeah. It was uh, Mark Bell, Mike Bell. Um, it was ran by Rick Bassman, and um, we were training in a boxing ring, which just has no give, wooden, okay? Mm-hmm. You know, they said, we're going to teach you how to bump my first day. I don't, you know, I you know, what, bruises now, I mean, 
but yeah, you, you know, you know, you don't know how to, you know, and you tell a gymnast to land on your back and you're like, wait, whoa, this is crazy. Mm. I came back the next day and um, they looked at me and they're saying, what are you doing? And I go, oh my God, I just drove three hours because LA traffic, right? And I was mm-hmm. like, I just drove three hours. Was I not invited? And they said, we didn't think you were going to come back. And I said, I'm going to be honest with you. I can't turn my head left. But now I have 29 days to learn how to wrestle, which is impossible. Mm. I used to think, naive Lisa, mm. I thought it was like a dance routine. You memorize the whole match. Yeah. And, you know, you don't just go out there, you know, which is known as calling it now. You know, you go listen to the crowd and, you know, you don't memorize everything. You know, you know what the finish is going to be, you know, in certain spots, you know, like I want to get this in. Yeah. But uh, that's that. And, um, man, I was going, I was training and um, Godfather was looking for permanent hose. Yeah. And yeah. so we, they were at Staples um, in L.A., went down, met him and, you know, wore, you bring sexy clothes, you know, you don't mm. know what they're, you know, that kind of stuff. And I met Godfather's wife mm. and I, I even had, we, we had him on our God TV show and I go, mm. ask your wife if she remembers me because your wife was the one that gave the okay of which girls could be permanent. Oh, wow. Okay. Because, you know, you don't, you know, they used to get their, the hose. Yeah. Girls from local strip clubs. Yeah. Okay. And got the okay. That was my foot in the door. You know, of course, I didn't tell my parents what ho, what a hoe was. When they came to a show, they're like, why are they, why are they chanting, save the hoe, save the hoe? And I go, oh, what's, you know, you see us, at, we're out with a sign. We're getting the crowd all hyped. That's what we do. And um, they're like, okay, you are going back to, med- you're going to go to medical school eventually. I go, yeah, I'm going to get burnt out of this. You know me, I get tired of things and I'm going to try another adventure. But um, it was so challenging being a wrestler. Mm. Um, so, so, oh my gosh, it's just, it's, it's a lot of sacrifice. Yeah. You know, you eat, breathe and sleep wrestling, you know, you're away from your family and um, you know, you have a birthday. Nope. I have a show that day. Anniversary. Sorry. I have a show. You know, it's the show must go on. We don't have an off season like football and baseball, you know, or soccer. And um, uh, it bit me in the butt. Um, There was a lot of people think I was going to, wasn't going to make it. And, Mm. um, that made me work harder mm. and I was watching the people grapple in the ring, you know, like they set up the ring yeah. and people kind of go, Hey, I want to try a new move out or something like that. And people are like working out in the ring and stuff like that. There's like some um, local guys trying to get a dark match, that mm. kind of thing, yeah. performing, doing their match in front of the agents, you know? Mm. And um, I was standing in the back because, you know, it's just a sidekick, you know, I didn't feel comfortable. Wasn't welcome into the big, wrestling family yet mm. um still had to prove myself and brooklyn brawler was behind me and i said he goes what do you think of that and i go i want to do what they're doing in the ring i want to do i want to i want to get in the ring i don't want to just walk to the ring but i don't want to sound ungrateful you know mm. yeah and he goes go, go talk to jr go talk to jr i did knock 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 the best talent relations guy ever he really took care of the talent i love jim ross to death honestly he was always there to listen to. You can call him at two o'clock in the morning. He'll answer the phone. You can still hear it now in his podcast how he talks about it. Yeah, like he still yeah. keeps an eye on everybody that he had to mind yeah. even back then. Yeah, he, he's like a dad. Yes. Yeah. And um, and he goes, well, I thought you're a physical therapist. And I go, no, I'm a personal trainer, the PTs. Yeah. He, ah. Okay. Okay. And he goes, well, I go, well, Gary Lawler says I need to move to Memphis. Because there's a, a school out there that like is a little bit, a little bit more hardcore, like old school style, and it's like it's, you know, shows on the weekend, you know, at armories at the gas station, that kind of stuff, and you train mm-hmm. twenty, you know, tra- train every day. There's no mm-hmm. day off. And he goes, "Oh, are you willing to move?" And I was like, "Yeah, if it's going to make me better out in the ring, yes." And so they had a meeting the next weekend. I came back for the Godfather. And he said, "How fast?" Um, Kevin Kelly goes, "How fast can you get to Memphis?" And I said, "When do you need me there by?" He goes, "Can you be there um, by next weekend?" And I was like, "Okay." You know, of course, you don't say no. You know, I thought, I thought I was just going to be in Memphis for like three months. You mm-hmm. know, just away from home. And um, 
my ex husband, I go, they want me in Memphis by next weekend. He goes, okay, well, I'm going to quit my job. Let's, let's pack up the U-Haul. Let's go to Memphis. And, um, and I go, well, I, what if I'm just there for three months? Why quit the job when, what if I come back? You know, what, what, and, and he was like, no, I'm not going to let you go out there by yourself. And so moved out there, uh, moved where, um, in her apartment complex with all the boys, um, you know, um, ECMO, you know, um, three minute warning, yeah, you know, um, um American Dragon. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Brian Daniel, I can't, I, I can't even still call him that. Daniel Brian, just, Brian Danielson. I can't even do it. I, I still call him B- Dragon. B B D. Yeah. 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 Spanky was there. Um. Oh my gosh. Low key. This school, Charles, the Haas brothers. That's mm. who I travel with mostly. Yeah. And the Samoan boys. Um. Uh, my gosh. Uh. It, incredible school. Um. Mm. Bobby. Um. Uh, Bobby. Uh, Bobby Eaton um, greeted me because I moved into a hotel, you know, a travel lodge. And he came out and he goes, okay, we're going to have practice tomorrow. <laughs> so I was like, moved in, didn't unpack, go to practice the next day. And um, it was, I was there and, um, for a year and then they closed down the school. We had individual meetings mm. and some people were let go. And it was freaking me out. And I was the last person since I was the only girl. Molly Holly was at the school too. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Everybody, everybody <clears throat> made from that school too. Okay. Um, and then I said, Kevin, Kevin, K- KK, Kevin Kelly, mm-hmm. I'm freaking out. Everybody's either coming back out like stoic or just not selling it or happy, but not showing it. What's going on? He goes, well, I already told you you're moving to Louisville. And I go, oh, I thought you guys changed your mind. And um, he was like, no, you're moving to Louisville to OVW. OVW, yeah. And went to that school. Holy moly. It was it was going from school to school was like, you know, community college, um, university, then med school or dental school, mm-hmm. you know, PhD. Yeah. You know what I mean? Status because OVW, I was in, I was in class with Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton, John Cena, Batista. Um, Eugene, Rob Conway, oh my, um, Shelton Benjamin, um, this school, I'm, I know I'm forgetting names and I don't want to insult there anybody, you know, but everybody made it from that school. Yeah. You know yeah I mean? It's a hell of a class. Hell of a class. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, um, at that time, you know, I'm so green, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, when I, my first day when I went to the school, um, I got there. Eugene, Nick Dinsworth, and Rob Conway mm-hmm. would meet me early, three hours early or two hours early before class, the regular class, because I didn't know what the hell I'm doing. I didn't know how to grapple, didn't know how to lock up. And, you know, I did lock up, but not great. Um, and they worked with me. And I had a 12 minute match with Rob Conway. They said, I want you to have a 10 minute match. And I go, I- I've never had a match. I don't know what I'm doing. I, um, they're like, just do all your repertoire. What moves you can do. And I was like, okay, so no, no psychology. Just get in there, lock up. Boom. Rob Conway's leading me the way. He's calling all the shots, right? And, um, it went to 12 minutes, not 10. And he goes, okay, you can stop. Good job. And I go, I ran out, vomited outside in the parking lot in the dirt. Yeah. I was like, I was so blown up because nerves mm. so fast. When you're, when you're nervous, you work too fast. You're not slow. Mm. You're just like, what do I, you're a deer in headlights. What next? What, what do I do? What What else do I do? And um, yeah, Danny Davis and Jim Cornette. Oh my gosh. This school was freaking incredible, man. Mm. And you don't realize it because I, you know, I'm green. I, I, I assumed every school is like this until mm. you visit another school and you're like, Oh, um, not, not uh, in my league. yeah, not my league, but I'm just like, Oh, yeah, your league. The rest. Go back to, ba- yeah. go back to basics. You know what yeah. I mean? Of going straight to the flying stuff, and that's when I realized I don't want to be a flyer. That's I'm, I was a big girl, and um, I'm a better base. I'll, I'll catch you all day long, but to fly, more risk of injury. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd rather hurt myself and catch somebody and let them do their pretty spot than me mm-hmm. to have that pretty spot. But um, yeah, and I got called up a few times. Um, OEW. Remember when Godfather threw me through a table? I was, okay. I was yeah, I was yeah. going to mention that. That was his payback yeah. to you as the good father. Yeah. 
Big Father with RTC. Yes. Yeah. And um, I didn't know. I was like, I can, I wrestle. I go to wrestling in school. Yeah, I'll go through the table. <laughs> and I didn't know it was going to take me off TV. So they, they, they took me off TV. You're going to go train yeah. 100%. And we want you to come back as a full-fledged wrestler. Nice. And so I was like there for quite a while and would get an occasional call. Mm. Um, Danny would make an announcement because he's watching us on the screen on mm. the monitors in the back when we have matches and stuff. Mm. And um, uh, Victoria, you know, I was Queen Victoria at the time. Mm. Um, he'd come into the office, would go to the airport, then I'd get a call again. They changed their mind. And so um, I was like, oh, okay. And um, again, it happened. Mm. And um, I thought, I'll be honest with you, I thought they were testing me to see how badly I wanted it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. Realist, I really yeah, did. Yeah. I'm not going, being disappointed and going, oh, let's mm. see how I thought they were holding the, the mm. carrot in front of me and dangling and taking it run away. Or if you were still, still, but that's not the yeah. case. They didn't. They just didn't like the storyline. They were just like yeah. going, no, nah, that's not really her. Mm. Um, we have something better coming along, or they were, had too many matches that mm. you know they would fit a dark match in there. You know what I mean? And um, even when I was ready to go back up as a full-fledged wrestler, you still feel green and mm. nervous. And am I ready for this? This is this is the big leagues. This is Broadway, mm. and this is the big this is the big stage. And um, yeah, it was just uh, an incredible experience, incredible experience. And um, you know, I always hear like when I do appearances, you know, like when fans are upset. I hated that storyline, or bah, 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 bah. you know. Um, we don't have a control over that. You know, we can pitch mm. ideas, mm. but they're not always going to go with it, right? And yeah. it's like a, it's like a movie. Um, why did you lose that match? You don't tell somebody an actor, I don't want to die in that movie. Yeah, make my character last. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's still the show, and you know, you're just you're just humbled and honored to even be part having a match, even if it's yeah. thirty seconds long, even yeah. if it's thirty yeah. seconds long. You know, and um, I was in a really good generation. Um. Of girls and um even jazz was at my ovw she was the one that helped me yeah. lead as a heel and she was a great heel um yeah, she, I remember me, she was yeah she was a badass like, she looked like yeah. freaking tough as she looks like me yeah. right yeah but when i wrestled her lock up she goes all right baby all right we're gonna okay then i'm gonna shoot you off you give me a clothesline <laughs> you know like very soothing so um to make you very comfortable in the ring yeah, and trust that's me that's good that was my forte. I think the lo yeah. my longevity in the business mm. was I was able to work with green girls and make them feel comfortable in the mm. ring because I was a deer in headlights mm. a lot of the time too. But I always, you know, you rely on somebody else to go. It's okay. No one knows what we're doing. Mm. Okay. We're human also. We can mess up a spot, mm. you know, whatever. The, the, the show, you know, it's not a retake. There's no retakes. So, um, yeah, I, I, I see when I do these interviews, I don't realize how much I've done. It well, makes me appreciate. Do you know what I mean? Like, because I'm, I'm still like, I still feel like a kid that I have so many things to overcome. Like, um, yeah. just a lot of goals. You know what I mean? And I'm mm -hmm. 52, and I'm like, I don't have anything else to prove in wrestling. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you know, it's, it, I man, I have no complaints about anything in my career at all. Um. I I loved the families that we created. I loved TNA, you mm -hmm. know. Um, the reason why I left WWE, um, when I would come out to the car and the fans were like going, oh, boo, how did you lose that match? You can totally tell. That, and I was like, oh, no, they're not leaving the magic. Mm -hmm. And it was getting to me. It was, get, it was hurting my feelings. And um, I don't have thick skin. Whatever you guys think, I don't. I'm very sensitive, too sensitive for the business, as Tommy Dreamer would say. Mm. And, um, but, you know, Fit Finley was the main, he made us girls tough as nails, man. Mm. He was the freaking godfather. I mean, like the granddaddy, like he made us freaking tough as nails. And, um, but I was just, I was, I was going to fit, you know, he was like our dad. It's like, man, I go, man, am I ever going to wrestle for the championship belt again? For the championship round, so sub belts, right? The title, whatever. And, um, I, it was bothering me. I went to go have a conversation with Vince. And I was like, do you guys see the championship in my future? And they were like, that look. And I was like, oh, 
okay, I, I get it. Um, basically, I was doing, you know, Fit came back to wrestle to help the people mm. bring up their, you know, their bring performance. The yeah. yeah, yeah, bring up the talent, right? Yeah. Talent enhancement, I guess you can yeah. say. Yeah. I hate that Perfect. word. But yeah, so um, didn't plan on going to TNA. I just was like, going, man, I go, I want to leave. I, I ended up going back and talking to Vince, Johnny Ace, and Stephanie. And I was knocking on the door, and Chavo comes by. And he goes, you thought I was pitching a storyline? All right, you got this. And I'm like, don't talk to me. I'm going to cry. Don't talk to me. And um, I went in there, and I say, hey, guys, I really appreciate like my my career. Um, I want to still love what I do. I don't want to be a bitter mm-hmm. vet and like talking bad about like, they didn't do this with me. I don't I don't want to be like that. And I still love what I do. And I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up, even though I was an adult. And mm-hmm. I was like, I didn't know if I want to have kids. I like, you know, and I I, I still want to leave being on top, not like, mm-hmm. oh, that poor Victoria, look what happened to her. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, and I, yeah, I yeah, still yeah. wanted to talk, I want I still wanted that passion for it. Mm. And then um, they said, yes, is there anything you need? And I go, could I have one last match? And they said, yes. And so they had me wrestle Michelle McCool. Yeah. 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 So that was, I was bawling, yeah, all day. And I, you know, had a whole speech written down. No, didn't even, nothing. I was so emotional. I couldn't get one. When I cry, I can't talk. I'm one of those people. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, yeah. And Went home, joined an MMA uh, freaking uh, gym because, you know, going from wrestling, you can't just go stop. No. You know, I was like, man, I still want to be in shape. I yeah. still want to do something active. And um, did that for, you know, a bit. And then TNA called me after my 90-day no-compete clause. And they said, we want to bring you in. And I was like, um, what can I think about it? And they were like, actually, we want to debut you Monday. And I was like, that's five days from now. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah. And they sent me the contract. They wanted to sign me for three years. And I said, like, how about we just do a year? You know, um, I took a big, huge pay cut. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, it wasn't the same pay. Yeah. I go, let me just prove to you that I'm going to be 100%. And every match you give me, I'm going to do my best and prove to you, you know, my second year, maybe give me a little bit of a raise. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, see, I, I just wanted to make sure I was happy. Yeah. You know, what if I didn't like it and I'm stuck in a three-year com- contract? And so, you know, I ended up staying there for four years and, um, yeah. Um, wow. And then met my second family was like TNA, you know, was an ODB's wedding or maid of honor, made some amazing friends, you know, um, Val, SoCal Val, Mickey yeah. James, myself, we have our own show on God TV on YouTube, you know, um, thank you, thank you COVID for something positive out of it. Yeah. We yeah, take them can, yeah. Yeah, we wanted to do yeah. something, and it's our third year doing it, and we love it. It's doing well, and mm-hmm. um, we have amazing guests. And I want to say to everybody that wants to be a wrestler, be kind to everybody. Don't think you're over anybody. The reason why it's like, you know, when I we ask our friends to be on our show, mm-hmm. they don't charge us. They're mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, I was waiting for you to ask me. I was kind of insulted you didn't ask me. And we're like, oh, my, well, we don't want to bother you. We don't know, like, how people ha- at home are Mm -hmm. they're still doing comic cons and stuff like that so because you're nice you're like yeah anything for you buddy you know what i mean that kind of thing Mm -hmm. so you know it just yeah yeah Yeah. so be nice you guys you're never over your other opponent even if they're just jobbing out or doing a 30 second match and let you beat them up you know those people help you you know the lighting the cable guys the sound guys everybody's part of the show you know man did i even let you answer any question it's fine. You've done it for me. I'll plug the questions in. It's okay. That's okay. Perfectly fine. I'm. It's just great to chat and great to hear. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. No I, I, I'm the first person I talk too much. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's good. Yeah. Not a problem. Good. But the we one. Didn't say it would be okay. What? One thing I would want to go back to though, with as you said, you're breaking in your green. The WWE finally gives you your call back, and you debut segment on Sunday Night Heat two. Th- thousand and two i believe yeah and you are pushed right to the top in the segment with trish Stratus, who's the champion at the time yes What's going through yeah. your mind with that and how kind of a double you're never, never ready you're never yeah. ready 
So um, are I you feeling care. a bit of a, a boost in oh, confidence nerves. as well? Or no. are you thinking, oh, no. Oh my God, I have a lot of proof. I got a lot of proof. And did, I got to prove to them that I deserve to be here. Yeah. And I got to I got up my game. Yeah. You got You can't mess up. Like, you know, and we're human. And mm -hmm. um, Trish was the one that came up with the storyline. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when, when we're when we're up there, we would get HS tapes and like in the catering room, see like people's dark match tryouts and stuff like that. And um, uh, yeah, I I had an angle with her, and um, man, we we beat each other up a lot. I mean, it was it was brutal. You know what I mean? But mm. you say sorry later, and um, it's not ballet. Yeah. And we had Finley. We could do anything wrong with Fit Finley. Fit Finley was our dad. He, my God, even to grapple with him. Like before the show starts, mm. we locked up and he um, took me down and I was like, whoa, easy, easy. And he goes, <laughs> he would laugh, you know, with this giggle. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, he's very snug, not stiff, snug, mm. but mm. safely snug. You know what I mean? So we we were trained to work a little bit more like not not strong style. I don't want to mm. say that, but just tough. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, he made us like freaking incredible wrestlers, you know, and you, and you don't, you don't finish learning when you're up there. And all of us girls in my generation, I don't know if they do it anymore. Hot house shows, live events mm -hmm. and, um, and Raw and SmackDown and Sunday Night Heat and Velocity. Um, we would get there three hours early. Ricky Steamboat would be there. Arn Anderson, Lance Storm, Fit Finley, um, uh, Regal, Regal. Regal. Yeah. They would all be there with their wrestling boots. Like, hey, just who wants to come in the ring? You know, let's just just screw around. And we, you know, you can ask you can ask anything stupid. Mm. You know how you're afraid to ask? Like, well, I'm not really sure how to do this move. I'm too embarrassed to say that. But you can, you know, always say what you can't do. You know, um, mm. instead of screwing up a spot, right, or a move. Yeah. Ask, hey, I need to learn more in my repertoire. I need more, like, I need more moveset. You know what I mean? I can't do the same thing over and over again. Yeah. So they would work with us before, you know, you know, God, we learned so much. And by the time the show starts, we're like beaten up and sweating. We're like, Oh my God, I go get my makeup done. The show's starting. The show's starting, you know? And, um, but it was, it was freaking incredible, man. And how I got my finisher. That's probably your next question. It's one of them. Yeah, I'll okay. let you roll into that one. Roll okay. into that one. Yeah, Molly Holly went to an independent show, and Molly yeah. Holly's very sweet and giving. She's yeah. one of the, the agents up there now, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, she came back. She goes, Victoria, I have a move for you, a finisher. I was like, okay. And she goes, okay, put me up in a power bomb. Boom, come over here. Okay, I'm going to grab your wrist, hook my neck, and then drop drop down to your butt. And I go, what? You know, she's upside down. And I'm like, are, mm -hmm. you, are you okay? What? I do it. Everybody's watching because, you know, it's not on TV. We're just, mm -hmm. everybody's in the arena, you know, yeah. talking about what can we do different in this match. And some mm -hmm. people are grappling, learning some other stuff. Um, you know, the training still continues. And um, right. everybody went, oh, what? And um, uh, Vince, do you like that for Victoria? He goes, are you okay? She goes, yeah. Awesome. And um, she got it. She went to an independent show. Saw Roderick Strong do it. Oh. And came back and gave it to me. Okay. And I met um, Roderick Strong when he was 13 year old, years old at um, Hotel Lobby. And he goes, Victoria, Victoria, I'm the one that came up with your widow's peak. And I go, Roderick Strong? And he goes, yeah. And I go, you put me on the map, dude. I go, Victoria would not be where she's at without that move. It's freaking awesome. Thank you so much. I hope you're not insulted. I took it. He goes, no, I'm very flattered. And, um, yeah, I took a picture with them, and I was like, "Dude, I go, yeah." So, thank you, Roderick Strong. Yeah, very thankful. It is a very impressive move. It's a very, yeah, yeah. yeah. When you watch it's, it, 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 yeah. It's devastating looking, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. the best ones. Crazy, easy. Oh my gosh, nuts! I'm very lucky. I'm very thankful. You know. Yeah, no, it's good. I'm not very political, but no, but I'm serious. I've done a lot and mm. nothing bad to say about anything. Mm. 
I was, I was lucky to be in it for so long. Hmm. Yeah. And how, with with the road you'd been on, and you said the, the the confidence, doubts, and everything that you had, how did it feel then when they put the strap on you then when you got the women's title? Uh, oh my God. Beating Trish Stratus for it as well. Survivor yeah. Series, a major yeah. review for the company as well. What yeah, was going I, mind with I, that? I, I, chipped, I chipped my tooth, um, broke my nose, um, got a big old lump on my head. Um, we were really physically like it was it was brutal. And you don't rehearse. Okay, hit me with the Singapore sling. Okay, catapult me in the the the, the corner spot where she catapults me. I was yeah, supposed yeah. to catapult her into it. She reverses it, and I go into the trash can. Mm. That's a real trash can. Yeah, it it popped back out yeah. and got my nose, and I go, I broke my nose, I broke my nose, and the referee's like, do you want me to finish it? Or you want to end it? Do you want to end it? And I'm like, f you, I'm getting the the title, mm-hmm. you know. And adrenaline's amazing drug, by the way. And um, you know, when you get the belt, it's it's a pat on the back. You're doing a good job. Yeah. But at the same time, you're a target. Everybody wants that. That they want to be the champ. And so every pitching storylines to go against you, I want to, I want to rip that, that championship off of her. I want to be the next champ, you know, cause we only had one match per night, you yeah. know what I mean? And, um, also too, what made Victoria too at the time, um, Stevie Richards, he mm. really, man, he gave me, he gave me confidence going out there, even though I second guessed every time I would go out, I said, oh, wait, wait, get away. I go, I'm gonna throw up. I'm gonna throw up. And he goes, Oh my God, again. I get so nervous. Mm. I get nervous belly. I want to puke. I want, I'm going to pee my pants and I'm shaking. My hands are sweating. And I'm just like, can I do this? I don't want to mess up. I don't want anybody to get hurt. I hope the crowd really reacts. Like you're so much pressure on you. Mm. Um, you know, and you know, the agents are watching on a monitor. Vince is right there in the gorilla. You know, you come back and he's like, you get the eye contact. You're like, Oh, I got eye contact. Thank God. You know what I mean? You know, because he's watching every single match. You know, yeah. it's not like go stand up and give you a hug. You know, mm. and um, you know, I we were in my generation. Hey, we didn't want to go. That was a great match. Mm. What did I do wrong? We would yeah. ask it. And he goes, "No, it was great. It was great." And I go, "Yeah, but that clothesline I did sucked. Mm. It didn't land. I mean, it didn't make sound. I'm like, it kind of it looked weak, right?" Mm. And he goes, "Well, you can make that. You know, we wanted to be criticized to make mm. our craft better." You know, we would like, we would crave be not insulted, just, um, constructive criticism. Um, you know, because we want to, the next match, we want to freaking take it higher and higher and higher. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it was incredible. It was incredible. And, um, but every time you see that confident chick going out there, mm. you know, um, you know, the black widow, let me plug in my shirt and then look at this, look at what it says on the back. The lady to mess with. Yes, I ain't the lady to mess with. Yes, I just got that made. And um, big shout out to Kakan Art. And um, uh, that co- that tough, confident girl that looks like a bully mm. and it can tear through metal. Mm. It's a facade. As soon as I I would I would be so nervous. I'd face the curtain. I say my prayer three times because three is mm. supposed to be a lucky number for me. I mm. say it. And then um, I'd go, hey, don't forget, watch out. I mean, I'm going to lay this in, man. Uh, just keep, you know, I'm just warning you, you know, that kind of thing. Just bump, bump. Once you feel it, bump. Mm. And um, and then I hear my music, you know, and um, I go r- right away in the freaking mm. zone. Lisa did not exist. I became that character that mm. I hated in school or on movies that were just... Mm what an asshole, you know, like, you know, that kind you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I became, you know, it's, and I like being a heel much better because it's easy to get people to hate you than love you. Yeah. Yeah. And it takes a good heel to make a great baby face and a great baby face to make a good heel. So whoever you have a program with, you, you're a married couple. You're, mm. you're married for that whole storyline. You're just like, mm. you know, I got you. I got you. You, mm. you trust the trust. They have to trust you. I'm not going to drop you, man. I got you. I'd rather hurt myself than be responsible if someone else breaking their arm or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. But um, I'm I'm very proud of today's like generation of um, 
girls, um, champions, superstars. I almost said divas. And um Well, I was gonna ask you that what your opinions are out. on. Yeah. Yeah. I was what gonna ask what your opinions were on the recent product because obviously there was the they called the women's revolution with obviously Charlotte Flair, Bayley, yeah, yeah. Sasha Banks, Becky yeah. Lee. But even before that, obviously, with me growing up, there were already good wrestlers that were coming in that were starting to bridge away from the, like you say, walking the eye wrestler candy. down the aisle, the eye can. Yeah. Which yeah. Obviously, is nice yeah, as well. You... But you had yourself, Trish Stratus, Lita, Jazz. Yeah. Jackie Molly Moore. Holly. There were I people that could yeah. genuinely yeah. wrestle yeah. that laid yes. the foundations for that. Yeah. You and, get um, some I... joy from thinking, well, maybe I'd crank the door just a little bit for them. Or maybe you know, and you also think. too, like, yeah, of course, of course, I'm mm-hmm. like, we, 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 we paved the way, and also mm-hmm. the people before me, you know, me and mm-hmm. Mula, you know, all, all the the divas before us, Medusa and you know, Sherry Martel. I mean, they, you know, freaking, they paved the way for us, and then they they probably watched somebody else, you know. So it's mm-hmm. not just one generation that turned, mm-hmm. like, oh look, it we're good now, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And yeah, you know. Um, I, the fans are pissed off about that. You guys are more upset about that than we are. We we yeah. realize because you know the girls give us a shout out going. Mm. You know I used to watch the, this character. Oh my mm. gosh, she was my favorite. Mm. And um, they still say thank you. You know. Oh uh, yeah, I've heard you know, so so Bailey so and that credit a lot like, to you. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you know it's this women's revolution. I think it's the title. It was very catchy and um, just like divas. You know what I mean? And um, the next chapter. It's like a next chapter. You know what I mean? So, but these girls are freaking incredible, incredible. Very, very they can run circles around me. Um, and I was really impressed when Trish got back in the ring. And I was like, girlfriend, you haven't lost a beat. I go, you're actually better now than back then. She mm-hmm. goes, yeah. And she, uh, yeah, it's just, they are amazing, man. Um, their, their caliber of moves and their endurance, mm. like me, like I would tell the camera guy and I was like, hey, I'm going to hit this move, zoom in close to my face because I'm going to tell you I'm going to kill this person. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to tell a story mm. on my face. You know, you want the storytelling, you know, yeah. like I was more like, I'm going to stalk my prey mm. and then attack. Mm. And then you know, if she gets one on up on me, I'm going to do whatever I can pull her hair or something, get her off me. You know what I mean? But um, get the heat. Uh, it wasn't spot, 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 spot. I, I, I don't work that way, and mm. I don't memorize matches. Like, mm. um, that, yeah, that's that would be very brutal, um, for me. Um, you know, there's a talent of calling a match, going out there and going, you know, we got this. What do you, what do you plan? I go, well, I might do this move. I'll call it out there. I might do this. You know, we know the finish. Mm. Um, just listen to me out there. You can go out there. You know, ODB, and we never had planned anything. Mm. Let's just go out there, have fun. This is if the fans don't get it. Let's turn it up. Turn yeah. it up. You know what I mean? If they're not yeah. booing me, I'm gonna get on you. I'm gonna make them boo me. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. um, or vice versa. But you know, listening to the fans, like, yeah. But these girls are ridiculous, ridiculous how good they are. So people trying out to be the next generation or the this the future superstar, they is it. They got to be ready, man. These yeah. girls like the training. Um, oof, you can't go in there just not knowing what the hell you're doing. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. got to have some some good training from school. You got to get the basics down so yeah. you can walk in the door. Yeah, even more now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, crazy! And they can talk on the mic. You know, I, I wasn't a very good talker. Um, <clears throat> But to be I, fair, I got, you got away with it though, because your character was just a badass. So you just it was yeah. it, it worked. When they, it worked. Yeah, when they when they would they give me like like they wouldn't give us scripts or like, hey, mm. gonna speak on the mic, just here here's your bullet points. Mention this, the pay-per-view, but 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 and we're mm. like, put it in your own words. Mm. And uh, I was like, Oh man, I'm more an action girl, man. I'm not a talker, man. You know, I can talk as Lisa all day long, but as you know, like Oh my God, what if I say something wrong? You know, I, it was just so much pressure. I was more, let me just get, let me show you what I can do, that kind of thing. Yeah. But it, now, this generation now, mm. you gotta be an expert at every freaking mm. talking. 
uh, your move set in the in the ring, mm-hmm. being fit and being able to keep up with the girls and and getting better every match. You know, there's a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. You know. Yeah, no, I can imagine definitely, definitely with it, and obviously with the the respect that's now being given to the women's division, that not that it hasn't been there before, it has, but it's more on the focal point now. What was the locker room like that you were in? Were the women still seen with respect, or were you just treated the same as the boys? Have you just got to earn your stripes and depending? No, on we knew like are. we knew like in my gen- yeah. like my my era, they're they're still. They still want the sex appeal, you know, yeah. the, uh, the, the, the butt and the boobs, like, you know, like to be the sexy, yeah. that, that, that part of it, you know, with the photo shoots and stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, when we had lingerie matches, were we excited about it? Absolutely not. We hated it, but we would go like this. Hey, I got a real cu- good cutoff. I'm going to, I got a great cutoff spot where the people are going to forget that we're in lingerie. You know, we're already half naked out there in our gear. So, um, you know, um, I think we we're more clothed with our lingerie because we wore two bras, double underwear in our tights. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, just the idle lingerie or bathing suit kind of thing. Yeah. Um, we would try to kill it. Okay. You want a lingerie? We're going to free. We're still going to freaking kill each other out there. Right. Mm-hmm. And forget that what they're not going to be judging on what we're wearing. But, um, uh, we would always like going, man, I wish, darn it, I wish I had a little bit more time on the screen, you know, like um, instead of a five minute match, mm-hmm. I wish we had eight minutes, you know what I mean? It was a lot yeah. of times like, we would get to Gorilla, they're like, we would have 12 minutes, they're like, hey guys, the other matches before you went too long, so it cut time on other people. And you do not want to cut time on the main adventures. Mm-hmm. You want to tell Undertaker, we went five minutes over, you have to cut five minutes off of Undertaker? Absolutely not. And so we would get cut a lot. And all right, we we got so used to it. All right, let's just listen. The referee would give us the time cues, and we're like, okay, let's let's go home. You know, at the end of the match, we're like, mm-hmm. we still have a good match. We just cut out. Like, okay, I plan on doing this. Let me just take that out. And um, but we were still a family. Um, like honestly, when we had problems with each other, we would sit down in a circle and just like just get it out. We have to get along, you know, we got to be friends back here and, Mm. you know, you're you're putting each other's life in each other's hands. And, um, and yeah, it was, I loved my, our locker room. I loved our locker room. It was, it was a good time. It was, I had, I had a blast. I had a blast. Was was it a fan watching it? Just the whole product was a good time. Yeah. Yeah. But but what what went on in the the locker room, like, you know, the ribbing Mm. and, yeah. Like all the jokes and stuff like that, you know, it created a lot of um, bonding. And also, you know, when we had long drives together, we would drive like in threes or fours and share a room because we had to pay for our own room mm-hmm. and our, our rental cars. And a lot of bonding moments have it on, happen, like happened on like our long road, road trips. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're in this town. Now we have to go there for the next house show, next house show. Now tomorrow's TV and then tomorrow's SmackDown. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah, you you create you're with each other more than your own family and your loved ones. You know, so yeah, I I I I'm thankful I was in that generation. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, and I, I'm sure the locker room right now is amazing too. Mm. You know what I mean? Because they have amazing matches, and so yeah. you know, um, no, I don't. I'm hoping that no one thinks they're better than each other. You know, and thank each other afterwards. Going, hey, thank you. You made me look great. Um, yeah, I, I got the, the respect. I got the belt. Yeah, I got the belt because of you. Thank you for making me look good, and I deserve I, that. Make me look like I deserved it. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think I, you do get that feeling that there is that camaraderie still there. Yeah, I think, I think they so. All come up together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can imagine it's pretty good. Yeah, just like there's just double the amount of women there. When I walked in the locker room for the, the Royal Rumble, I was like, oh, my God, there's like 30 women in here. We only had like six, ten, six, ten, you know? Yeah. Next question, Royal Rumble. Great plug. <laughs> okay, so I got a call, 203 area code, that's Connecticut, and I got a flashback. I go, 203? Oh, my God, am I going to get fired? You don't want to get the call from 203. This is back then when they were doing cuts and stuff like that. 
And I just let it go to voicemail. And I was like, I picked it up. And I go, oh my God, they want me to rumble. Okay, I was running errands. I go, I, I don't want to call when I'm driving. I got to be parked. And like, I got to be focused on this. And um, I called Mickey and SoCal Val. I was like, I think they want me, they want me in the rumble. I don't, it's in, it's in, oh, it's in two weeks. I don't have gear. I don't work out anymore. I don't have my red streak. I don't get my nails done. I don't tan. Um, you know, um, I'm living, I, I'm a foodie. I'm a foodie now and a homebody. And uh, Mickey was like, you need to do it. The fans need closure. You deserve this. You need to do it. And so come out. And I was like, okay, let me call. And I was like, when is this? They're like two weeks. And I go, um, I don't have ring gear. I don't have ring gear. I was like, oh my God, I got to call somebody to make me ring gear in a rush. Mm. And um, how am I going to get in shape for this? I bought a recumbent bike. You can't do a recumbent bike and get ready for a match, but I can't be sitting on my ass at home. Yeah. No ring near me. You know what I mean? Um, and so I was like, I don't know what the heck I'm going to do. And um, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't even tell my family that I'm going to be going back because I didn't want it leaked on the Facebook or like, hey, mm. good luck in Florida or something. Yeah. Um, got there. They had rehearsals, um, which was telling you your number. And they said, Victoria's number 10. And I started crying. I was like, <laughs> and um, they were like, let her get her shit in. Everybody's been waiting for her to come. Let her get all her moods in. And I go, what? I get all my, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do out in the ring? What, what are my, what's my repertoire? And Tori came up to me. She goes, sis, you're here. And I go, I did not want to tell you because you would have called Candace. And then Candace would have told somebody, I just want it to be a surprise. I want it to be a surprise. Big, and, big reveal. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, I'm glad that um, I'll be honest with you. I was like, I wish it was in front of a live crowd. I think I would have um, made a mess of my pants if there was a live mm. crowd. Um, mm. It was really neat to see the computers because mm. you'll see me at the moment. Look, and I was like, oh, my God, I've never seen these screens like this. There's actual faces that are watching it. And it's they're actually in the audience, you know what I mean? I, I thought it was really cool, but then I was like, okay, I gotta go to the ring. And um, thank God for Mickey and, you know, Bailey. Oh my gosh. Um, oh gosh, there were so many girls that helped me. Um, I have, I, had, I kept it going outside. I wanted to throw up. I was so nervous, just a lot of pressure. You know, I haven't been back in a long time. I'm, I'm like, I hope I look okay out there. I hope my knee brace still feel, fits. Um, and, um, uh, Mickey kept on going, you know, you're freaking Victoria. I'm like, thanks. thanks. I, you know, I, I'm just nervous. They're like, you don't need to be nervous. Like, you know, people want this. They want this. And um, it was, it's a lot of nerves. It was, um, I didn't eat. Tori brought me fruit. And he goes, she goes, you need to eat something. And I go, I'm going to throw up. I'm so nervous. They're like, my God, how long have you been doing this? And, you're, and I'm like, oh, this is big. This is big. Mm -hmm. And, um, did my stuff. Um, the girls were so great. Bailey was like, I'll take that move. I'll take that move. And um, like a lot of people wanted to take certain moves. Like they're like, yeah. no, I'll take it. I go, I just gave you a move. And um, it was really neat that they wanted to take mm. a move for me. It was like, I've never experienced that before. Well, and a little nod of respect to you. Yeah. It's, it's but cool. neat. It was yeah, like, I was cool. like, it was, I was just like, mm. it was just, I was not used to it. Okay. So yeah. um, when I got, you know, Ixnaid from the, the match, um, I landed outside and I, I went like this to the the camera guy. I go, oh my God, I am so effing, bl bl I'm blown up. I go, I have to leave? Hold on. I was so out of breath. I thought like I was going to cough up a lung. You know, that burning, like when you <laughs> swim too long. And I was like, I couldn't get enough oxygen in. And I went to Gorilla. I, you know, I'm not ashamed. I went up there. I go, you need to call the talent two weeks before doing this i go i am so out of shape i was like oh my gosh i go but it was it was great and um yeah one of the guys said hey you ready to come back full time and i was like wait wait wait, wait, wait wait a minute you know what i mean but um you know it was incredible i was very very it, it was i cried it was yeah. very emotional very very emotional and like all the love and support i got on social media I stayed off the phone for like five days. I was so, I felt like I got hit by a truck, even though I got mm. all my shit in, right? Yeah. I was just, I 
couldn't get out of bed. I was like, because of the nerves and like just mentally and physically exhausted and just, I needed time off and um, just to not talk or anything and just veg out in my bed, no makeup, a bun. And um, that was, uh, oh my God, it was, it was, it was nuts, man. And um, when people say, would you go back and wrestle? That's probably your next question. I would love to be an agent, um, a coach. Um, I don't have anything else to prove wrestling. Mm. I would rather help the younger talent on, you know, character development or, you know, you know, work the psychology of a match, that kind of stuff. Like, just like what Molly, Holly does and um, yeah. like what Gail, Kim, what Gail Kim does, that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, I don't need to be on camera. You know, we have youtube.com, God TV show. Okay. Slash God TV show. Um, that's our entertainment right there. You know, we're in pajamas, drinking wine and shooting the shit. Just, you know, having fun, you know, having great guests on there. Sometimes just us. And um, honestly, I don't, you know, I don't, you know, when people are shocked, they're like, oh, you need to go back. And I'm like, no, no, no. I, you know, I'm 52, man. These girls are incredible. I, um, I had a great career. You know what I mean? I would like to get back more. I'm enjoying my appearances, comic cons and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Did I miss anything? No. But it was it yeah. I look like when I I'm telling you, when I do these interviews, I don't realize what I've done. Honestly. Love, um, love, yeah. Yeah. And then when, and it's it's weird, like I usually get recognized when I have no makeup on at Walmart. And I'm like, oh my God, you still remember me? I'm still baffled by it. Yeah. I yeah. I it just it still shocks me. Yeah. Millions. Millions. Crazy, huh? It's crazy. Millions. millions. So Gosh. I know you're gonna be starting what I'm about to mention very very soon, your show soon. So since taking a step away from the ring, what are you up to these days? What hobbies you into? What what interests you got going? What is yeah. It's the um, today. Um, well, we have our show, Mickey James, so Cal Bow and myself, um, have mm -hmm. a show. It's um Gaw TV, grown ass women TV. Um, and um it just started from COVID and we were just drinking wine. It was supposed to be wearing pajamas every time. But every weekend, how many pajamas can we own? Honestly. So we just do normal clothes sometimes, you know what I mean? But we have amazing guests on there. Um Trish Stratus was just on there. She did my the widow's peak in her last cage match, and we had yeah. her. She, oh yeah, nice she reached nice. out. That she she reached out. She goes, "I'm only going to do your guys' interview since I did your move." And they we're like, "Oh my god, okay, wow, it's great." And um, uh, I'm enjoying. Um, I mean, I have two dogs. You know, um, my I I love doing my comic cons, my my autograph signings, and you know. I'm a nerd and geek at heart. So my comic cons are, is, is, it's a guilty pleasure for me. Um, but I'm into paranormal stuff. I'm obsessed with freaking paranormal. Um, what my baby goal is, is to be a guest on one of the, you know, uh, like fear factor, um, a, a fear, a um, project fear and, um, oh, twin, yeah. paranormal, twin paranormal, like be a guest as like yeah. going with them on a, on, uh, paranormal. celebrity. Ghost hunt or something like that. Yeah, yeah. but you'll yeah. you'll probably yeah. see me cry because I was like, you know, you watch it at home and your safety of your own home. Yeah. But <laughs> in that scenario, I was like, I go because when I say I, I would be out of there in a second, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm enjoying just um, you know, I live with my boyfriend and I have my two dogs and um, I, I'm I, I'm enjoying doing our show and doing a lot of podcasts, you know, stuff like that, and uh, you know. Yeah, I do my live auctions. I have a live auction Saturday, the 28th. You know, um, I get to, you know, those are the signings when you can bring the fan in and talk to them. So it's like mm -hmm. a personal meet and greet, you know, yeah. so keep in the wrestling, you know, world. I'm not mm -hmm. totally, you don't say retire when you're a wrestler, a pro wrestler. It's just not in your vocabulary. You're always going to be mm -hmm. sometime, you're, you're going to be linked to it somehow, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, but it's just, it's nice to, you know, a lot of us like old timers, you know, we're friends and we don't really, you know, Melina and I, you know, Candace, Corey, like all of like, you know, Gail, Tracy Brooks, ODB, you know, we'll call, hey, what do you have planned today? 
you have shipping to do? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, I'm, uh, I got my, um, ODB. I got my food truck in to do. And then Melina goes, oh, I'm organizing my damn closet. Like we talk about normal stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, it's crazy, but we still end up talking about some kind of wrestling, but not, it's just not 24 seven now, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. I still feel like a big kid though, you know, still not. I'm 52 and I feel like, I still feel like, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just going, I'm just going along with life and just not as um, stressed, mm. you know, what I mean? mm. um, but still hustling, doing a lot of signings because I live in San Diego, California. Mm. I rest my case on that. Um, people are like, you well, do a lot. I'm like I have to look where I live. Well, the don't pay I'll themselves. Be- I'll be visiting your beautiful city next year with my, well, fiancé now, then wife. It'll be at the time honeymoon and we're doing the West Coast. So I will be in San Diego for a few days. So I can't wait to see what it brings. Uh, Yeah, well, email me and let me know. Like, you'll probably go. um, I'm I'm down. I live downtown. So you'll. I know you're going to be going to all the cool spots and stuff like that. It's a fun city. It's just expensive as hell. And um, a friend of mine's been, he says, the best city he's been to. Is San Diego? Yeah. I, honestly, this is my, oh, actually, my leisure. We got these bikes from Costco mm-hmm. and uh, electric bikes, the smaller ones, not the big yeah. ones. And we, uh, remember, we got rid of our car. Don't mm-hmm. need it. We ride our bikes all the way to Seaport Village. Yeah. Um, ferry across to Coronado, Coronado Island. Mm-hmm. It's $20 round trip for both of us. $10. Okay, come back. We'll go drive, ride our bikes through Little Italy, go through the farmer's market. There's like one in Little Italy, one downtown near me. Yeah. And come home and just every time we ride on the, you know, the ocean. Mm-hmm. And um, I just, I cannot believe I live here. This is so freaking beautiful. Yeah. All the yachts out there. And you're just like, you need to, like, no wonder I spent a fortune to live here. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. It's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. yeah, I look forward to visiting it. I'm sure. I it can't wait. You, you, guys, you and your fiance, maybe we'll, uh, my boyfriend and I will um, join you for dinner. Happy. Yeah. It'll be an absolute honor. It'll be a pleasure. Okay. All right. right. Well, oh I know you're yeah. busy, so I will obviously end the interview here, but I'll stay on just a little longer to say a little personal thank you as a fan. Okay. So I yeah. will, so the producers don't get bored of this, me doing a fan thing. I'll go ahead and I'll say, Thank you very much for your time. It's been an Thank absolute you. honor, been an absolute pleasure. Brilliant interview. And Thank uh, you so much, Nathan. I had a blast. And um, it's very flattering that people still want to interview me and talk about the business and stuff like that. Cool. So it's it's an honor for me, too. So I appreciate um, just a big shout out to all you fans, all your love and loyal um, support, and just being kind on the social media to me. There's occasional one one or two bad ones. You know who you yeah, are. Just ignore but, them, don't yeah, them. I know. I know. Um, but thank you so much, you guys. Um, just making me feel special. And I made a lot of friends um, that are civs, civilians, normal people, not wrestlers. So um, I love you guys. Thank you, Nathan. You're the best. Pleasure. Thank you. And, um, I look forward to um, promoting this on my social media. Will do. I'll have it hopefully up next week. Yeah. Get it done in between okay. work and stuff. But I'll give you a email and let you know when I'm about to hit. And you're, you're freelance wrestling, right? Is there, uh, I'm I, doing it on freelance, yeah. Okay, I follow you already. Just DM me. Yeah, I'll DM me. Yeah. I followed you like for years. So um, I already follow you. So just DM me. Say, hey, yeah. just a reminder. I'll be posting it. But invite me as a collaborator because the description I'm not good at. Okay. You know, like the type, email you about that. Yeah, I'll get your advice part, on that. The texting part, I'm just, the hashtagging, that's too much for me. That's fine. I'll email okay. you that. You can all give right. me the intel on how to do all that stuff. All right. No Give problem. my love to your producers. Thanks, producers. Will, will do. Bye. And this has been for Bodyslam.net. I'm Nathan Krogh. This is Lisa Marie Veron. Very good. Stay gorgeous, you everybody. Will do. Right. And okay. I'll just stay thank on with you, you quick. So okay. You. Do you boot me out or I, I leave? I leave. No, no, I'll boot you out. I'll boot you out. But I'll just stay on with you very okay. quick. Bear with. Bear with.